How's it going, y'all? This is going to be the final phase for Dragon Song Guide using the LPTU strats. If you guys want to check the previous parts, it's down in the description below. All the, the I have a whole playlist for all the phases. And if you guys want to join the Discord server for LPDU, it's also down in the description. And also, the toolbox that we're following is LPDU strats, and we're going to basically go over it, going step by step, explaining all the moves, explain all the mechanics. And so let's get down to it. As soon as this phase starts, the first thing that's going to happen is the tank is going to face Thordon towards A marker, facing north. There's a whole mitigation uh, plan for this, for all the mechanics. So in the toolbox, you can see all the, all the specific mitigations right here. And so this is something you're going to want to follow based on what role you're playing. So keep this in mind for the mechanics up ahead. But we're also going to be talking about what the mechanics actually are. Akamorn 1, Giga Flare 1, all these things, we're going to go over them step by step. So here we go. The first thing that's going to happen right now is uh, the fire and ice mechanics. We're going to explain that first. So fire and ice, basically, uh, if it's fire, you're going to stay out of the boss. And if it's ice, you're going to go inside the boss hitbox. Fire just means his armor is too hot, so you want to be away from him. If, he, if it's Ice Swords, you're going to go closer towards him and basically be inside his Donut AoE. So you want to give him a hug because he's too cold and he needs warmth. That's the best way to think about it. So this is how you remember what you got to do. Once the cast bar finishes, by the way, is exactly the time the fire or ice goes out depending if his sword is ice or fire. All right, that's the main thing here. But the first mechanic that's going to happen here is basically going to be the Exa Flares Edge 1, right? And in this example, he has fire. So we stay outside his hitbox and we go towards the south side, or rather behind the boss. Basically, where the boss is facing, treat it like this. So if he's facing A, you're gonna do this. If he's facing one marker, the mechanic goes off the same way based on where he's facing. So keep this in mind. So essentially what's going to happen is after once the Exa Flare goes off and the fire goes off, you're going to walk in dead center where the exact spot of the first Exa Flare behind the boss went. So it's going to go just like this. You're going to walk into this spot and then down right in this spot here where the, there's an interception between the lines is exactly the next Exa Flare dodge. And then after that, the tank is going to face the boss um, straight north. All right, so I'm gonna show this in-game POV so I can better demonstrate this. All right, so here we go. This is the beginning of the phase. As you can see, the boss uh, is immediately facing Alpha. That's where the main tank is facing. He's facing the boss uh, north. And you can see the first mechanic that happens is fire swords. As you can see, his swords are on fire, which means we stay out. Exa Flare's edge is gonna happen. And no matter what the Exa Flare pattern is, you always can do this for every single pattern you get for Exa Flares. You simply walk dead center of where the light beam is, right? So once the cast bar goes off, as soon as the cast bar finishes, right? You can see the explosion. You're gonna see fire went off as well. And then you simply walk towards this spot. And then once the second set happens, so boom, right there. Now you walk forward, right between these lines here. As you can see, just like that, you dodge it. And then you keep whacking the boss. And then the boss is facing, will, will, will be facing alpha. As you can see, boss is facing alpha and he's gonna do auto attacks. Now we're gonna explain these auto attacks now and what they actually do. All right, so now after these Exa Flares went off, like we said, the main tank is going to be facing Alpha or one marker. 
mainly you run a face alpha. Depending on the mechanic that happens later, it's fine to just face it alpha or one marker because you want to use these lines to dodge the exa flares for the whole party. That's the reasoning behind it. Um, for the tank movement here, by the way, um, just know that the, the tanks, they don't move directly east and west after the Exa Flares. You kind of go forward into the hitbox first, just in case an Exa Flare is going to linger and hit the flanks. So you kind of walk in like this. And there is actually a line in this picture here kind of demonstrating that movement. So just be careful not to get hit by a flank Exa Flare. So for the auto attacks, Thornton is going to target the first and second person in aggro. And also, whoever is closest to Thornton, aka the people that are non-tank, they're gonna one, uh, they're gonna be uh, basically alternate, and each one's going to go inside the hitbox to receive an auto attack. Okay, so this is what we're gonna refer to as the Trinity autos. Basically, if you're a main tank and you get hit by the auto, if you're the highest in the aggro list, you're gonna get a dark debuff. If you're off tank, you're gonna get a light debuff. The whole idea behind this is you cannot receive more than two stacks of either light or dark. And so this is why that once these auto attacks go off, the other tank has to provoke afterwards. Just make sure you provoke once the cast bar of the next mechanic happens. This way you don't turn the boss on an off angle. You want to make sure it's cardinal. So as you can see, here's the auto attack goes off and the people that are going to be going in the middle is the following. M1 is going first, and then Melee 2 is going next to soak the auto attack in the center. I'll dis I'll display this in the video POV so it makes more sense, but essentially the melees will do first. So M1, then M2. So I'm gonna show this in in-game POV so it makes more sense. So here we are in-game POV, as you can see. Right after the Exa Flares were done, the Reaper goes in the center of the hitbox of the boss, since it's the closest person to receive this, they're gonna go going to get hit. So that he's M1, I'm M2, I'm going next. There's the auto attack. As you can see, the main tank and off tank also get hit. They receive the dark debuff and light debuff. And if you're obviously getting hit in the middle, you receive both debuffs, just like so. So next, I'm M2, I receive the hit of the auto attack, and then next mechanic happens. So it's basically that simple. So I'll go over it again, okay? First auto attack goes off. I go on a second melee, I receive it. Tanks, both make sure that your the main tank is the highest in aggro and the other tank is second in aggro. And right when the cast bar shows up here, Akmorn's edge, this is the exact time that the off tank would provoke the boss because now the Gunbreaker in this example needs to receive dark debuffs because he has two light debuffs. You cannot receive more than two. Like we said, if you're main tanking, if you're the highest in aggro, you always receive dark debuff. If you're second in aggro, you receive light debuff. So now they have to swap the aggro. The Gunbreaker has to be highest in aggro. And so as you can see here, the Gunbreaker just provoked. He is now the highest in the enmity list and Paladin is second in the enmity list. So that's the way this works. The next mechanic that's happening, by the way, here is Ak Morn's Edge. Thornton is basically going to place three um, stack places here. Just like so. One, two, three. And these things, basically, you need to soak them together. And I'm going to show in the toolbox how this looks and where you need to be. All right, so here's how this is gonna work. Essentially, the best way I can put this is group one is going to go on the northwest side stack marker. Group two is going to go northeast side of the stack marker. So in this case, just to clarify this, melee two, range two, healer two, northeast, M1, R1, healer one, northwest, and then you have both the tanks going south and soaking this together. What's gonna essentially happen here is it's going to be big stack markers that need to be soaked this way and lots of heals needed here, lots of mitigations. Refer to the mitigation plan um, in the toolbox to know exactly when you're gonna do your mitigation. 
But essentially, this is how it's gonna look. Just remember that it can also be ice or fire. If Thornton's swords are fire, like we said, if it's fire, go out first and then walk inside the hitbox after the fire goes off. So in this example, it's ice, so we just stay inside the hitbox and we don't have to go um, anywhere else. Just know that the reasoning, if it's fire and you stay out, once the fire goes off and the reason we go inside afterwards, once the fire finished going off, is so that we are in range of heals and shields and all that. That's why we want to move in forward a bit, make it easier on the healers, because this does hit quite hard. There's another strat where it's like 6-1-1, but we're not going to dive into that because PF in LPDU, if you're playing on EU, everyone does 3-3-1. Three, three, I'm going to simplify this. I'm not going to talk about a different strat that people do, but it is possible. If you want to know it, you can check the toolbox and you know how it works, but we're going to stick to the fundamental, all right? So after ice goes off, now there's going to be multiple stack hit markers and you basically want to Make sure you pop your feints, your addles, your reprisal, the main stuff here. And then once the stack march goes off, the next set of autos are going to happen. And I'm going to show this in the game POV. All right, this is how it's going to go exactly, okay? The stack markers go off, his sword is fire, Akmorn's edge is being cast. Now, watch this. Akmorn's edge finished casting, the fire around Thornton happened. Now, we walk inside the hitbox. See how we, after the fire went off, we went inside the hitbox to receive the stack markers this way we're in range. Once the cast bar ends, the ice or fire already happens. You don't have to worry about anything else after that. The next is just going to be stack hit markers. It's going to blast you. So you want to make sure you have the shields and everything sorted. Right after this, you want to be facing, like we said, the boss needs to be facing either alpha marker or one marker. So in this case, it's facing one marker, okay? As long as we utilize this floor pattern. This is why it's very important that the tank faces at either alpha or one marker after each mechanic. Next is gonna be the set of autos. The next people that are soaking is ranged one and range two. So in this example, the dancer is soaking and then the black mage. This is the order, right? So it starts with melee one, melee two for the autos. The second set of autos that are coming, which is happening right now, these set of autos happen after every mechanic, by the way. So range one, range two is going next. After all this, it's going to be healer one, healer two. So it follows melees first, then second is range DPS, and then the healers. So as you can see, same idea. Tanks, now remember Minerva, aka Gunbreaker, they are the highest in aggro. They are receiving dark debuff because now they provoke, they are main tanking. Okay, that's important. Range two soaks. And now what happens here is Paladin is now going to provoke and make sure you provoke after the cast bar. So the boss isn't diagonal facing or anything like that. Always make sure it's facing alpha or one. Next up is going to be Giga Flare's edge, right? Giga Flare's edge, to put it simply, once Giga Flare Edge um, flare, uh, Flares show up, I'm going to show you right here. So we have one right here. All you need to do is see where the first one appears. After the first one appears, you're going to go opposite of it, right? So in this example, we go opposite of it. Now, southwest of my character right now, at the bottom left of the screen is the second Exa Flare, okay? So this means that we're not going to go towards the second exa flare we're going to go towards the third okay so right here just to kind of demonstrate this again to be a hundred percent sure that everyone understands what i'm saying opposite of the first one that shows up check if it's ice or fire swords in this example it's ice swords so we stay inside the hitbox thornton needs to be hugged because he's cold once, X, uh, uh, once the Giga Flare's edge goes off, we're going to run towards where the third one showed up. Because otherwise we're going to run into the second one that's going to hurt. And a quick little tip here as well. Once in the cast bar, the cast bar reaches the capital E of edge is the exact time you can pop your reprisal, your feint, your whatever. If it lasts 10 seconds, 
because it's going to last for the entire duration of Giga Flare's Edge. If you use Reprise a little earlier, the last hit of Giga Flare's Edge will actually hit you. And I mean, it's going to hit you harder. So right here, you see the feint that I fainted right here? Just like so. We run here, see the feint. Has four seconds left. Three, two, one. Last one hits. Feint runs out just at the perfect time. So this is the exact timing. This is my feint. And this is the exact timing you want to use your mitigation. And then after that, like we mentioned, it's going to be the healer's soaking. So healer one, healer two. Now it's healer two. Like we said with the tank business, all right, you always want to make sure you have two dark debuffs, two light debuffs in this scenario, and make sure you're not getting higher. Like we said, main tank gets dark debuff, off tank always gets light debuff. So this is why now it's going to be another provoke happening here between the tanks. And I just want to emphasize something here, by the way. This is the even window. You do not use your even window in the beginning of the fight in this phase. You use it here, okay? So in the first Giga Flare's Edge, this is where you use your evens. I wanted to make sure I emphasize this. Don't use it in the opener of this phase. Always use it here. Again, I will just demonstrate this in the toolbox. You can see here, one, two, you stay on the opposite of one. Okay, this is fire, so you stay out of the boss once the mechanic happens. Once Giga Flare's Edge finishes casting is the exact time that now you can walk into the hitbox if you want, but you, you should try to stay max melee and just run around the boss, just like so. And then third one, and then obviously the autos, like we mentioned, healer one, healer two, takes the autos, just like that. And then it's going to loop this entire, the entire mechanics are basically now going to be looped. You're going to do the exact same thing. So after healer one and healer two soak the auto attacks, it's going to repeat. We go back to Gig Exaflare's edge. This is the time that the melees now have to go in and receive the auto attack. So same idea, you dodge like this, you move here, and then back towards the boss, M1 goes in first. So that's the Reaper. Remember, with the tanks, the same idea follows. You want to use Provoke when the cast bar shows up here. Off tank is going, uh, the person who wasn't main tanking here will Provoke to now receive their dark debuffs. And then you're gonna have the stack markers happening again. It's Ice Sword, so we go stay in and we stay in. Continuously deal damage. And then right after this is gonna be also autos. After every single mechanic in this fight, you're, uh, there's always gonna be autos after each one. So after Exa Flares, autos. After Giga Flares, autos. After Ockmorn stack markers, autos. Every time. So always, always remember when it's your turn to soak autos in the center of the boss hitbox. So now it's the R1, R2 soaking. So Black Mage now walks in the boss hitbox. They soak. All right, tank, swa uh, tank provokes, same idea follows. And now you have this repeating as well. It's literally just repeating. One shows, we go opposite of one, ice or swords. The same principle follows. And then we're, finally, we're gonna be talking about the enrage of this and how it's gonna work. The final enrage of this is gonna be called Morn Afaz Edge. He's going to place three stack markers, essentially. And I'm going to show a POV example of the whole thing actually happening because here we kill it too fast. So I'm gonna show you how it looks from a different uh, clip. All right, so here's a clip of Warnafa's Edge. You can see they kind of look different like this and I'm gonna explain this now. Essentially, the way this works is basically you're gonna have the lowest DPS people going in to die first. Like you can't really soak this as three. It will just insta kill someone just has to be inside it. So the lowest DPS are basically gonna go and die. And then you'll have the other, aka the, the tank and the ranged people, they're gonna die. And then the melees at this point simply just need to kill the boss. And so they have to finish the boss here. Essentially, the rate or the enrage with this is if you don't soak at least at least all three towers, it's just going to enrage and you're going to lose the fight. So that's why you always have like the lower DPS dying first. 
so that the melees, who are the highest DPS, they are basically going to have to burn through this boss and finish it off. You can also pop LB here if needed, and so that's the fundamentals of it. And here's how it looks in the game POV. You can see Mornifah's edge is being cast. You have healer here, tank here, the other healer is northeast. And just like so, but obviously in this video example, it was in rage. So as you can see, we didn't have enough people. And this is how it looks. Boom. Everyone dies. Game over. So that's why basically you want to try to kill the boss here. And that's basically the enrage of uh, Thornton. And that is pretty much the entire final phase mechanics. Um, it simply loops. And always remember when you're soaking the auto attacks, it's pretty straightforward. And it's mainly a big portion of it is planning your mitigations, remembering your mitigations, remembering to soak your auto attacks, and just remember the loop. For example, um, if you're playing melee, after each exa flare, after each time there's an exa flares mechanic happening, that's when the melee soak. And then after Akmorn's edge, it's the R1, R2 soaking. And then finally, after Giga Flare's Edge, it's the Healer 1, Healer 2 soaking. It's always in this order, every time. It loops, and all you need to do is just remember this movement. Remember, the tank stuff is also very important. Always watch your debuff and just make sure that you have the correct amount of debuffs. And just remember, main tank, dark debuffs. That's what you get when you get autoed. Off tank gets light debuff. That's what happens when you get autoed. So make sure it doesn't go over to, that's why we have to tank swap. Remember to use provoke when the cast bar shows up, so you don't f make the boss face non-cardinal, like non, not towards A marker or one marker. It always has to face towards A marker or one marker. And then you're pretty much good to go. That is the entirety of the fight. I hope this guide has helped out. This uh, pretty much concludes the DSR guide for LPDU from phase one up to the final phase. It's, an, uh, it's been a long journey making this guide videos. I've, I'm sorry, I apologize for being pretty slow on it, by the way. I've just been doing a lot of different types of content on YouTube and I never got to finish this guide and I really wanted to. So for all the folks at LPDU, uh, best of luck with the prog. If you guys have any questions uh, for me, you can always stop by on my stream, um, twitch.tv slash only nine, link is down in the description. You can hop over, ask me questions about Dragon Song, anything you'd like my Twitter, my Discord, you can freely ask me stuff in the YouTube comments, anything like that, if you guys need help, um, best of luck with your clears, God bless, take care of yourselves, now go get that clear, and enjoy yourselves, and enjoy the fight, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day, thank you very much for watching, and take care.